five. Oh, I love it, man. Tuesday nights are the bomb. I'm telling you. You know what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Are you ready? The Bible says we're supposed to take off this cloak of heaviness and put on this coat of praise. Are you ready to throw down the night, G5? If this is your first time, we are so fired up you're here. This is Mama G. My name is PT. Yes. I asked this little beauty to marry me 30 years ago this year, all right? I know she's only 19, but uh, we are so honored to have you, man. Look at your neighbor and say, you look way better than I thought you were going to. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, man, we're going we're gonna to rejoice tonight in the Lord. Is that all right? The world right now is very anxious. Would you agree? And I know right now we got things on our hearts, but we're going to exchange that anxiety for worship tonight. Amen. We're just going to do what he says. He says, instead of worry, pray. So we're going to do that tonight, all right? But Mama G and I are going to welcome well, you. We do want to welcome you. We're so excited. You could have been anywhere tonight, and you chose here tonight. That is awesome. I feel like I need to river dance tonight, man. I'm pretty fired up about it, you know? That's the thing. So I do have something that I'm so excited about. show this? Okay, yes, let me hold, hold your mic. There okay. you go. Now, I'm not the best model. This is a reveal. This is our new G5 Servant Leader Kitchen Staff. Their new apron. So, now when you go to go down the line for food, you will always know who know who the servant leaders are that night for the kitchen because they're going to be wearing it won't be as long on them as it is on me uh, are, i said i could wear it as a dress are we going to make these available for our g5 you know, family we room we probably could oh we have these definitely. g5 family rooms hello g5 family great room. idea we love you g5 family room and this is where people get together with 20 or 30 of their friends and they just throw down like we're throwing down they sent me video of these guys sunday it got me so fired up People are finding Jesus. They're growing in him. They're turning their houses into sanctuaries. His family's reaching families. It's so cool. But they know, people are so new, they don't even know if they come to G5. We actually have food here. Yeah. And let me tell you why I love it. When I'm at home, Mama G makes me eat grass and chickens. <laughs> when I get to G5, some of you purists out there, you're so good. You, you bring chicken, fried chicken. You bring pizza in the house. You got to get down here. We not only worship, we worship when we eat, man. It's I beautiful. I saw somebody snuck some in a bag. Do you snuck some Butterfinger and some Almond Joys? I saw them. I saw them. <laughs> uh, well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that later. I'm sure. Uh, we get to worship and we, we get to welcome. We get to welcome, yes. And so, so this is the place where you can belong before you know how to behave. God. Now, I got to tell you, we'll love you. We'll never judge you. We'll never measure you. But we do love to talk about the truth around here. So can we show them our G5 yeah, we a, welcome? a love language here called physical touch. It's so cool. So yes. these are the ways we welcome a G5. We do a G5 fist pump. Ladies, G5 fist rings. pump. Go ahead and do that right now if you wish. Just practice yeah, one. Yeah, practice. Yes. And then we do a G5 side hug. Okay, okay G5 side hug. There you, you go. Are good. Yes. Look at you. And hey, do this at your comfort level. If you don't yeah, feel comfortable, you don't comfortable, you just don't have go, to do hey. This. Yeah. hey. Just walk up and go, hey. Hey, back away. Toe touch. Toe touch. Look Your at that. Your new shoes. We don't want to mess up oh, PT's uh, new shoes. Oh, you see my new kicks? Come Look on, get that, get that on camera. Look at uh -huh. that. Check him out. That's my birthday present He's right the there, coolest buddy. pastor Woo! in town. I am. I'm cool. And, yes, and then we got the knee, the knee touch. I guess oh, you call it. Oh, the knee touch. Right? He, yes. He's not here. He's and then come up with that one. The almost favorite one of all is the G5 hip bump. Ow!
5, we are going to continue in our worship. If you want to grab your seat, I have the, uh, the privilege and honor this evening to, uh, to pray over the offering. And um, I've had an amazing last couple of days because uh, some of the greatest gifts that God gave me, my mom and dad, were in town. And... Uh, so this was a Christmas present to my mom from my dad, and it was actually a gift to me, right? Because I'm sitting there when I didn't know this was happening, and my dad gave the gift to my mom, and of course she began to cry because she just wants to be with her favorite son. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyways, uh, they had the opportunity to come down, and I was thinking about the fact that it was a gift uh, to my mom from my dad, but it was also that it was also a gift to me, and it was a gift to other people. And uh, you know, when I, when we look at what, when we give a gift, and what we do with that, and what that really means to God, and Miss Laura, if you'd put that up on the screen, that that verse. So Hebrews thirteen sixteen says, "Do not neglect to good, to do good, and to share what you have. Share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God." And so, my dad, you know, he gave this gift and he shared it, but. How pleasing was it to God? And how pleasing is it to God that when you give a gift, you're not giving a gift to G5. You're not giving a gift to, honestly, to, to a board. You're not giving a gift to a, a, a family or a person. You're giving a gift to God. And here at G5, as we go out and touch the globe, these G5 family rooms, it fires me up. I got friends that are in these things, and I'm telling you, the stories that are coming out of them because of the gift that you give here at G5. This is way bigger than these four walls, folks. And we have so much that God has placed on the leaders' hearts in this church, and you get to be a part of that. So I just encourage you to give and, and give back to God, whatever it is tonight. You know, if that's $1, if that's $100, it doesn't matter the size of the gift, but giving back and that how that touches God's heart. And so tonight, if we can just Stan, we're going to pray. We love you. There's, there's a few ways before we do that. I'm so sorry. We can give online, g5church.com. Um, you can go to the mobile app, and you can text uh, 77977 to G, uh, G5 Church. And then the envelope, there's cash or check. There's a drop zone in the back. And uh, certainly, we'd love that checks can be made out to G5 Church. So, And the favorite way that we give at G5 is we can go to the app, and we can just go... And we can go boop and we can just give it and it just saves your information it's really a beautiful thing and um, this generation just loves that so if we would stand we're gonna pray we're gonna continue in our worship dear Jesus father we just thank you for this day father set before us people with hopes dreams visions father you've given us talents you've given us the ability to go and do work Jesus those gifts that we, we receive, the blessing that we receive, Jesus. Thank you for, for touching the hearts of each individual here tonight, blessing the giver and encouraging them, Lord, just to give back to your kingdom and your will, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you that we get to worship you. We thank you that you are breaking chains. You're setting people free, Jesus. Father, tonight in this place, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for these gifts, Jesus. Father, in your holy and precious name, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory. Father, in your name we pray, amen.
know um, Alyssa, but um, she's a young servant leader in our church. And I just looked over a little bit ago, we were singing the chorus and she was smiling so big, singing out the words and worshiping Jesus. a sense of freedom just radiating over her guys there's pure joy in worshiping Jesus there's pure joy honoring Jesus there's pure joy and don't you tell me age defined being touched by God don't you tell me age defines being used by God don't you dare tell me that age defines hearing the voice of God She was worshiping Jesus, had no intention of trying to be used by God, but God used her anyway. I'm sorry, but some of us come in here with so much stuff on us. And maybe we don't, we, we've never witnessed worshiping Jesus this way. Maybe you don't understand why we do this. There's pure joy and freedom in Jesus and when you break out of the pride that holds you back when you break out of the self-esteem that keeps you from saying God I'm here I don't care what I look like I don't care what religion I was raised in I don't care what I've been told no to or yes to God this is what you've called me to and I'm gonna do it I remember as a little girl seeing people worship Jesus and I I wasn't there yet I wasn't I wasn't there I was young five or six and I remember I was just so worried that people would watch me or see me and I'm telling you I can vividly remember the day that I raised my hands for the first time and I have never felt a freedom like that before in my life
church sometimes we know the freedom that would set people free and we try so hard to get them there because we know what it's like and I'm just begging you tonight if you've never surrendered in a way like this before if you've never said God take it all I release this God I'm unashamed to lift my hands if you've never done it before maybe it's a, a half a one or a, a, a little extension like this or you don't have to put both up if you're not ready but I just encourage you to get one up at least because there's a freedom that releases in your life when you say God I'm open-handed open-armed ready for you this song says it all you have nothing to worry about he's already won it he's already the champion of it but I'll just encourage you to step into the freedom God's called you to tonight to step into it you know I was so worried about people watching me and God just kind of hit me upside the head he said don't you want them to see you worshiping me let the eyes peek let them see let them see let your kids see let your friends see come on don't be that person that invites someone to church and says well i'm gonna refrain tonight just so they're comfortable no show them what you believe in show them what you're called for there's a worship in Jesus a freedom in Jesus through worship like you've never felt before and tonight it's got to break church we got to get so radical in our praise we've got to it's okay to scream and shout and say Jesus Jesus we need you but I want to do this and I want us to sing this bridge because not only are we declaring that, God, our words are going to start having breakthroughs, that our words are going to start setting people free, but God, our actions, the way we worship you is going to start setting a tone and setting people free. I'm telling you. But I just encourage you. It's okay. If you're a little scared, just kind of like swing it up there, you know? Like just do a really big swing and just be like, oh, did that happen? That happened. Oh my goodness. I promise. You're about to feel a freedom that you've never felt before. Don't worry about who's watching. Let them watch. Let them sing. Come on. Let's sing when I lift my voice. Come on. Raise them up. Come on.
Lord Jesus, I thank you for the freedom that we find in you. God, I thank you that you've called us, that our purpose, that what you've called us to is freedom in you. God, that you have not called us to isolation, to chains, to fear, to worry, to loneliness. Come on, God, that you've called us to freedom and joy and love and grace and mercy, God. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege that we get to worship you. If anyone's wondering tonight what they were created to do, they were created to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, here we are. We're set apart. We're set apart. We're not gonna act like the world. We're not gonna speak like the world. We're not gonna walk like the world. God, we are set apart. And that's the truth we stand in. God, that we're not better. We are different in you. God, remind our hearts tonight that it's about you. It's about you. It's all about you. We love you so much, Jesus. We give you all the praise, God. All the honor, all the glory, Jesus. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Yeah! Woo! You guys are amazing. That's so awesome. Oh, I am glad when they said, let's come into the house of the Lord, huh? Well, what a privilege to be with you tonight. I hope you've got some paper with you or a smartphone or something that you can plug in, man. We're going to, I'm going to seal this message. I, I did the 12 principles of increase. And uh, I want you to know, you can't study God and not find out that God is a God of increase. God wants you to have more in your life. Tonight, can I talk to you about the theology of increase in your life? How many of you know God always supplies your need? Sometimes it's not in the timing that I want it in. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes I'm like, hey, how you up there seeing this? Come on, hey, hey, hey. I love to talk to people in their 80s and 90s, and I asked him, I said, tell me about your walk with God. And they always say, well, there was this time. There was this time. I didn't think I was going to make it. There was this time when it really looked bad. There was this time when it seemed like everything was falling apart only to find out that God was bringing it all together. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, if we can get that scripture up, I just want us to read this together, Ephesians 2.10. I'm sorry I'm throwing this on you. Laura is so amazing with all these incredible scriptures that she puts up. In Ephesians 2.10, if you don't know, if you've never read it, it says, for we are God's handiwork. How does it feel tonight to know that you were designed by God? Uh, I like Porsches. Do you like Porsches? A designed by Porsche. I like fast cars. Do you? That's why I drive an SUV. <laughs> My wife went, big boy, you're not going to be in a fast car because you don't know how not to drive fast. I'm like, I don't like it when you know me that well. We are God's masterpiece, another one says, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I don't want you ever to ever say again in your life, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Because I promise you, it's something that you uncover. It's something that you discover. 
and God is going to help you. When you start studying this theology of increase, you can't study God without understanding that God is the God of more. We're going to talk about it tonight because I want you to know that God never created increase in your life for your self-esteem. He never in, in his life ever created increase in your life for you to hang your pictures of yourself in your halls of look at me. The Bible says, let people see God's good work in you so that they can glorify your Father in heaven. It tells me that maybe my ability to receive more from God has to do with my motivation of why I want it. If buying a new car is going to make you find your self-worth, maybe God is not that excited about getting you a new car. Maybe you need to understand that a new car could never validate your worth. That a bigger house would never validate your worth. That a new brand of clothing would not validate your worth. But all things were created for you to walk and say, God is good. He blessed me. That's why when we're eating steak, I'm looking at my kids going, God worked this out. When we're looking at a sunrise, I'm going, kids, God worked this out. When we're watching a sunset, I'm going, kids, look at the glory of God. We find it all the way around us, don't we? Amen. You can't read the Bible without understanding that God took the life of Abraham and he said, I'm going to increase you. Do you know that? Read it. He says to Moses, I'm going to increase you. He says to Jacob, I'm going to change you and increase you. Matter of fact, I'm going to change your name. Matter of fact, in every one of our lives tonight, you cannot follow your life and not see that God is the God of increase. But God has to prepare us for that increase or the increase he give us, gives us will destroy us. When I was a little boy, uh, we lived out in the country, and I rode my bike 10 miles uh, to go get a Butterfinger because I really love Butterfingers. <laughs> and I pedaled that thing, and there was this hill that went forever. And me and my buddies went together, and um, we didn't have any money when I was a kid. So my dad, I think, went to a junkyard and found this bike. And, and have you ever ridden a bike where the wheels weren't really strapped on? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you have these fancy bikes, right? We, we didn't have fancy bikes. My bikes were like, when you rode them, they felt like they were coming apart, right? And so I had my Butterfinger, so I was feeling really cool. And I remember it was the summertime, so I had my shirt off, so I was skinnier than a rail then. But can I tell you, we started down this hill. And as we're going, how many of you know before long, the hill was long? It was like really long, like a half a mile, and it was like this downgrade. And it wasn't before long that the bike was going faster than my feet could pedal. Have you ever had that happen to you in your life? Have you ever ran so fast your body could not keep up with you? Do you know what I'm talking about? That is just a disaster right there. But can I tell you, I remember my bike kept going faster and faster, and all of a sudden I realized, go, you are in for trouble. Because all of a sudden, it started shaking. I started singing Elvis Presley songs, a whole lot of shaking. I'm telling you, it was awful. That bike started shaking. You would have been pleased with me. I made that bike stay up way longer than it ever intended to. It shook so bad. It was like... And I was holding on. Have you ever been holding on for dear life? Because you're going, oh, Lord, if I let go, it's not going to be pretty. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I was most concerned about that when I got home, my dad would not look at me and go, oh, son, that's so bad. I was most concerned that he would look at me and go, son, you are going to die. <laughs> you disobeyed me. You knew you weren't supposed to ride that bike 10 miles. See, I didn't tell you that. Can I tell you, some of us in our lives are operating out of an area that God never intended us to be in, and we're writing something that was not ready to carry the blessing that God put in your life. If God brings you a person, if God brings you a thing, if God brings you a blessing, and you're not ready, you will destroy it. 
instead of elevate it. I wouldn't have to go alone tonight to find people in this room who people have ripped your heart out because they could not handle the value that you have. Well, all of a sudden, I went airborne. I will always remember this. As I was flying through the air, I went, wow. I distinctly remember saying it backwards, wow. I mean, it was, it was amazing. And all of a sudden, I hit the road. It was hot, and you could feel the skin pinning, and it had that little round pea gravel. Do you know what I'm talking about, that little round pea gravel? The kind when you step on it, you speak in tongues even if you don't believe in it. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I remember sliding and getting up. I was just pulverized. I was picking gravel out of my skin. And I remember thinking, Goad, why did you take a bike into a place that you were not ready for the overwhelming energy and speed that this thing could take you? Can I tell you, that's why prosperity in your and my life. That's why abundance in your and my life. That's why increase in your and my life must be built on the solid ground of God's Word. I've given you the 12 principles. You've got to understand, the Bible says every one of us have been given seed because the Bible says the seed has been given to the sower. What you do with that seed how you steward that seed is everything in your life. Can I tell you? Prosperity and increase will wreck your life if you do not understand that increase was never given for you in your life for you to take and show or think that you are somebody because you've been blessed. God never gives you a blessing for you to say, I'm more spiritual than everybody else. God gives you a blessing to be a blessing. I, I just want you to know in your life, in 2 Corinthians 2, verse, chapter 9, verse 6 through 11, the Bible says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts. Give what you've decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. No, 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 no. But God, he loves a cheerful giver. Now, I found out he gives a reluctant leader a blessing too. God Almighty loves it when you and I understand that he wants to bless us abundantly. I want you to know in your life, God wants you to take your time, your talent, your treasure, and your touch and he wants you to invest it in the lives of other people. In the lives of other people. You and I should honestly, every chance we get, enrich the lives of other people around us. That's why we do our kindness campaign. If you don't know about that, please get some cards at the end of the service. And just when you're out, do something kind for somebody and hand them one of these cards. It's buy them a cup of coffee, maybe buy a sandwich. Do something that honestly you can't get any credit for. And be kind. Maybe you could even write a little note on it. We're here for you. It says G5 Church on the outside of it so they, they can find where we are. I just want you to know that God wants to enlarge your harvest. Do you hear me? The Bible says the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. The harvest is ready. God's trying to get something to you and I, but we've got to get out of the way so he can give it to us. 
Let me give you four simple truths tonight, and we're going to eat. I want you to take these, and I want you to wrap this around the 12 principles of the harvest. You need to understand that God cares about your need. God cares desperately about your need. But your need does not move the heart of God. What moves the heart of God is when you step out in faith. And when you release your faith, it pleases God. It moves the heart of God. It moves the hand of God. And all of a sudden, everything in your life changes. And I just want to tell you, if you've got a need tonight, please sow a seed. Sow a seed. Mother Teresa said that one person cannot change the world, but they can throw a stone that falls into the water, but the ripples will last and last. Take what God has given you, I beg you tonight, and trust Him. Believe Him. Expect from Him and watch what He does in your life. Number one, the first thing I want to beg you to do, and I've done this many times, I pray that you and I can hear this tonight. I beg you the first thing tonight is put God first in your life. See, when God is first in your life, increase will happen. But when you don't put Him first in your life, your increase will be very unstable when God is not first. You will feel like, God, I'm doing everything I can, but I'm not getting ahead. Put God first. Don't tip God. Don't try to buy God. Don't try to bribe God. Don't go, God, look. I was kind to her. I was kind to him. Seek God first. The Bible says seek him first. First his kingdom first. You see, if God's not first, then you will honestly... You won't hear correctly, you won't think correctly, and you will not do correctly. You will be amazed in your life and in my life that when I put God first, I will treat people very differently. When you put God first, He will help you love people that are unloving. He will help you give in areas where you would normally would have taken. Can I tell you the crazy thing about sowing seed is you don't immediately have a harvest. And some of you, the Bible says, don't get worry in well-doing because you will reap in due season. But some of you go along and you rip your seed out of the ground and you eat it before it matures and germinates into what God wanted to put an increase. I'm begging you in your heart this morning or, or, or tonight, don't do it. When motives are wrong and agendas are wrong and reasons are wrong, God has no responsibility to bless it. He has no responsibility. You put God first, and it will be amazing how the life of more will come into your life. You'll get more promotions. You'll have more love. You'll have more grace. You'll have more power. I I mean, you know this scripture uh, is so powerful in Romans 5.20. Romans 5.20, God talks about that where there was offense and where offense might abound and where sin abounded, grace does so much more abound in your life. God's answer to your and my sin problem is grace. And wherever sin is bothering you, wherever it's trying to overtake you, wherever you're being tempted, God says, my grace is more abounding than that sin if you will plug into me. My grace is sufficient. What is it in your life right now that you need to stand strong, put God first in your life, and experience God's grace instead of the temptation to do wrong? He's able to do it. He's promised he will do it. There's a second thing I want to beg you to do, and that is be a good steward. Not only put God first, but be a good steward of what God gives you. When God gives you seed, you know what you can do? You can spend it, you can waste it, or you can invest it. When God gives you a gift, 
You can waste it, you can spend it, or you can invest it. When God gives you relationships, you can waste them, spend them, or invest them. When God gives you a wife, man, you can waste her, spend her, or invest in her. Men, when God gives you children, you can waste them, spend them, or invest them. Ladies, when God gives you a man, you can waste him, you can spend him, or you can invest in him. We are investment bankers in this room, and we are going to invest, expecting a return, because God has promised, you put the seed in the ground, and I will bring it back. 30, 60, 100 fold. This is a word for somebody tonight. I am so amazed around here that how God is helping us to learn how to be better and better stewards. Folks, this thing is on fire. Sunday morning, we already should be into probably two or three services. I can't wait for you to come. On Tuesday nights, I can't wait till we are so jam-packed If everybody showed up tonight, we would be in trouble. But it's because I believe with all of my heart, there are a group of people who are saying, I'm not going to spend my life. I'm not going to waste my life. I'm going to invest my life in corporate worship and hearing the word of God. And I'm just asking you tonight, online, G5 Family Rooms and here, will you give me one year of your life? Will you let us begin to pour into you? Right now, we want to be good stewards of the gifts that God has given us. And I just want to tell you, I told him Sunday morning, I'm going to tell you tonight, we've got huge needs. My daughter's just getting ready to do a live album here. They're getting ready to build a set in here. It's going to be crazy. We need a new soundboard. That soundboard, if I was asking for me, I would be so timid right now. But can I tell you, I'm asking for the God of the universe. We need $25,000 for a soundboard right back there so that we can broadcast to the world. Well, that's a lot of money in this time. I know. But come on. You know what we're fighting for? We're fighting for the souls and the eternities of men and women and boys and girls. Is there anything that's too expensive for us to reach them? I don't know. Somebody probably is listening tonight that God, you've been wondering, God gave me this money and I don't know where it's supposed to go. Put it in the ground to touch the world. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it with excellence around here. We're launching new and more and more ministries. Family rooms are coming up. If you don't know what that is, friends are just getting together. In this time, a lot of churches are closed, and a lot of people are just saying, come over to my house, and we're going to watch G5 together, and they eat afterwards like we do. We're investing We're investing in equipment. We're investing right now in men's ministry. We're investing in women's ministry. We are are going to invest big into young adult ministry and children ministry here. We're going to do it. Why? Because the harvest is ready. The labors are few. We're going to be great stewards. The third thing I beg you tonight is don't downplay your gift. Put God first. Be a great steward. And stop saying you have no gifts, talents, or abilities. Stop saying you missed your time. Stop saying, well, I'm not good at that. Stop saying, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm... Hey, come on. Now, can I tell you, be willing in your life to come and serve and watch what God does in your life and in your family. It will blow your mind. God's got great things for each one of us. One morning, a mother got up, and she packed a sack lunch for her little boy, and he took it out, and he watched Jesus. Only in a few short hours for some disciples to come up and say, can we have your lunch? You imagine that, little boy? You take my lunch, you're going to have some sore legs. I wish I could have been there for the exchange when he said, sure. Every time you take something out of your hand, out of your wallet, out of your life, whether it's love, time, or attention, there will always be a tinge of fear. Because when you have it, you think you have it. But can I tell you, because I love you, as long as it's in your hands, it will be the smallest it will ever be. 
I would encourage you to just get in the flow of God. Flow of God. Well, Tim, are you trying to take an offering right now? No, I'm really not. I'm trying to get you to live a different life. Some of us right now are stingy with our love for other people. Some of us are stingy with our honor and our respect of other people. Some of us are stingy with our loyalty. Some of us are stingy with our words of kindness to other people. I got to tell you, I cannot believe that God gets me to, gives me the privilege to be a part of this with you. I look at you, and you have no idea how you minister to me. And by the way, this church not only meets and reaches this little community. We have people here tonight from Chicago. We've got people here tonight from Salt Lake. We've got people tuning in tonight literally all over the world. People are being changed by the power of God. Only Jesus can do this. But here's what had to happen. We had to take what was in our hand, our lunch, and then God blessed it, he broke it, and he distributes it. That's why sometimes when you give God something, for a moment it looks like, woo, he's destroying it. And some of us don't want to go through the transition of the gift being given and the transition of God preparing it to be blessed, to be distributed. Are you with me? Are you okay? Some of you are in this place right now. Some of you are in this place with your relationships. And I just want to encourage you in your life, God is about to show you something extra to your life because he loves you. He loves you. Have you got that? Don't downplay your gift. Uh, my wife is amazing. When we first met, she said, I will love you like nobody will ever love you, but don't ever ask me to speak. Don't ever ask me to sing. And don't ever ask me to do anything except stand in the corner and look pretty. And I really love the fact that she stood in the corner and looked pretty, but here's what happens. Here's was this asset that God had ordained, he had called, he had anointed and no one had ever pointed it out in her life. And then I watched her one day as she spoke in front of a group of people. And I'm talking about men. I'm not talking about like wimpy men. I'm talking about men. They cried listening to her speak. And I went, oh, Lord, have mercy. She's got a gift. You see her up here singing and worshiping tonight. One day we were doing an outreach I had uh, outreach around the world, 180 countries. We had missions work. We're still doing work in Honduras and other places around the globe. And I said, could you please write me an email? All of our other people are taken. She said, you know I can't write. I said, honey, I don't know if you can write or not, but will you just take a shot at it? And she emailed it to me. And Charles, when she did, I was driving and I had to pull over. Because as I was reading it, tears started streaming down my face because of the gift that's inside of her. Can I ask you a question tonight? Will you stop telling God what you cannot do and downplaying your gifts? Let Him work in your life. The fourth is I encourage you to live for more. To decide tonight that I'm going to put God first in my life, that I'm going to be a good steward of what he gives me, and I am going to stop downplaying my gifts, and I am going to start living for more. When Jesus took the lunch of that little boy, he blessed it, and he fed the multitude, and then he took up leftovers, and the leftovers were more than anybody could ever imagine. It was 12 basketfuls. Now, the Bible says that there were 12,000 men. That means there were women and children. He took a simple lunch a fish and bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it. And look what's taken over in his life. I want to challenge you, church, tonight. I want to challenge you to give what you have tonight, to put it in the ground, put it in God's hands, 
your, your, your life. I'm not only talking about dollars. I'm talking, by the way, this is the most generous, unbelievable church I've ever seen in my life. I watch you all with almost 100% participation of everybody that comes here. They're involved in giving. It blows me away. Only God could do this. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about with your time and your talent and your touch. Will you live for more? He took it. There were leftovers that day. It became a legacy. Do you know why? Because Jesus knew that there were others that were in need, not just the crowd that was in front of him. God wants to bless your life, but the soil you're planted in really does matter. Jesus is amazing how he finishes the work. How he looks and he sees these fields that are ready to be harvested. The world, I can tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I know the world thinks there's lack. I want you to know that God has abundance. But without his unbelievable ability to open your eyes, you can't see it. If you could see what God wanted to do in your life and around your life, you would realize that you need more people for the harvest because it's ready. There's more to do, guys. We are a family reaching families. Our family rooms across this nation are families reaching families. We actually are watching homes right now being turned into sanctuaries, much like the book of Acts where they went from house to house. It is amazing what the enemy meant for bad. God is making it for good. And by the way, the revenge for this pandemic is going to be revival in our world. God will not be silenced and he will not be shut down. So tonight I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to take what's in your hand and release it for God and give it to God? God says there's a lot of pain in this world. God says there's a lot of sorrow in this, in this world. God says there's a lot of hunger in this world. And here's what he says to you and I. I want you to pray, but I want you to do something about it. Get involved and watch what God will do in your and my life for the broken, the bruised, the forgotten, and the overlooked, for the up and outer as well as the down and outer. Maybe you would say, Tim, I want to get in this fight. I want, I want to know the God of more. I want to put God number one in my life. I want to, honestly, I want to take my life and my gift. I'm going to stop downplaying it. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to become a great steward. And I promise you, I'm going to get busy in the harvest right now as we move. And I am going to believe Ephesians 3.20 to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to think or ask. According to the power of God that works in you. If you've never accepted him, accept him. Stop running from him. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect you to save yourself. He doesn't expect you to fix yourself up. He doesn't expect you to do any of that. And most of us, the reason we won't come is because we're afraid that he's going to judge us for our past or we're concerned he's going to take our future. I just want to tell you tonight, he'll forgive you of your past and you really don't understand what a future he's got for you. I don't care how old, I don't care how young, I don't care how educated, I don't care. You don't know what God can do with you if you give him the opportunity. If you've never asked him to be Lord of your life, let me lead you in this simple prayer. Everybody pray it after me. Dear Jesus, I'm lost without you. I give you my life. Cleanse me. I'm a sinner. I confess that. But I thank you that you said, if I would ask, you would save me. I am now a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand to your feet right now? We're going to worship, and then we're going to eat. But I want to ask you right now, please, right now, in these next few moments, if you want God to be released in your home, if you want God to be released in your business, if you want God to be released in your marriage, if you want God to be released in your children. By the way, I'm talking to somebody right now that you think you've lost your children. And I'm telling you, Satan is a liar. 
Your children are going to prophesy. They're going to rise up and be blessed and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You watch what God is about to do in all of these lives. We're going to see revival happen here at G5 like we've never seen before. We're going to see people's hunger and desire. We're going to see worship go to a whole nother level. We're going to watch it. So if you want more from God, will you just say, I'm going to raise my hands right now. I'm going to raise my hands in the air and act like I don't even care. He's your heavenly father. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person in this room. I thank you, Lord, that you are the Lord of the harvest. And I thank you, God, for blessing every life that's here. I pray for that body tonight, Lord, that's sick and afflicted. I thank you that healing is being administered in their lives. I pray for our G5 family. A lot of them are sick. I pray, Lord, that your healing power will touch their bodies in the name of Jesus. Right now, I speak to you, John, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be whole in Jesus' name. I speak to peaches in the name of Jesus. You have got to be whole. I speak into our family rooms across this nation right now that destiny and Lord, that you are going to touch them and heal them and deliver them and set them free. I thank you that chains are being broken right now. I thank you, Lord, for the more in every one of our lives. And would you receive the glory and would you receive all the honor for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. And Come when on, let's go. I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Come on, Jesus. Oh, Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, miracles are breaking out. I have the authority, Jesus. When I, when I lift my voice, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority, Jesus. Come on, Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles are breaking out. I have the authority, Jesus has given me. You are my champion. Come on, sing it. minutes and time as we just go over a little bit of G5 news but first and foremost um, what we want to do here is we want to celebrate um, the lives that got changed and said yes to Jesus come on can we give it up for that come on if you gave your life to Jesus online welcome home welcome to the family we are so honored and just so proud of you for saying the best yes you could possibly ever say and if you said yes to Jesus we would love for you to fill out this card, um, keep, you know, one day, Lord. Do you guys watch me struggle every week with this? If someone has a great idea to help me, maybe it's just prayer, I don't know. 
um, but the Lord will be good. Anyway, um, we would love for you to fill out this card. I have decided if you gave your life to Jesus, check yes. If you want to get baptized, check yes as well. The best thing you can do when you say yes is to tell somebody else. And so make sure you tell us if you said yes to Jesus. We would love to celebrate with you. And if you said yes to Jesus, we would also love to give you this book. It's called Your New Life because we believe when you do give your life to Jesus, it's a brand new life. Behold, a brand new person. And uh, you got a lot of questions, I'm sure. And so we would love to just walk with you and just be near you, um, just to walk this new journey. And if you gave your life to Jesus and you're watching online in one of our G5 family rooms, you can actually go to g5church.com and right on the front page, there's a PDF download of this. So you guys don't miss out and you can get this. So make sure you do that as well. Um, if it's your first time at G5, welcome home. PT and Mama G said it, but you can belong before you know how to behave. Anybody grateful for that? In Jesus' name, I'm telling you what. That saying, I know, we say this all the time. We say that saying quite often. And I don't want us to get familiar with it because Jesus does not require you to behave when he wants you to give him, when he wants you to give him, oh my word. When he would love for you to give him your heart, his, your heart. I can't say that. You know what? The Lord is good. Um, but he doesn't require us to be perfect and be all put together when we say yes to him. And so the greatest thing we wanna do here is we wanna be like Jesus. So who are we to judge you for the way you come in and what you're carrying? We wanna be open arms, open heart, open house for you to come in. And so you can belong before you know how to behave. And so welcome home. We would love for you to fill out this connect card. It's just a simple way for us to stay connected with you to let you know that you matter. I promise we don't have time to bother you to fill up your email with a bunch of spam mail. We just want you guys to know um, that you matter to us and we love you. And we want you guys to keep up to date of what's happening in G5 because there is a lot going down. And then last but not least, we have PT mentioned this, we have our kindness campaign. These kindness cards are so, so cool. And we just encourage you guys to grab a couple of these from the connect table. You don't want to miss out on just sharing the kindness of Jesus. And this is a really great way for you guys to just really spread it and make sure that they have an invitation to come and get more of the kindness that we so um, desperately need in this world, amen. So make sure you guys get those. Um, can you guys believe it's March next week? Like, woo! We have a filled March, we're so excited. Um, if you guys didn't um, get a chance to come to, we had a really packed, heavy G5 week in February. And I'm really excited because we also have a really heavy G5 week in March. So it's gonna be incredible. But starting out on February 12th, we have Yaw Night, March 12th, I'm sorry. We have Yaw Night. This is our G5 Young Adults. You guys do not wanna miss this. Come check it out. Come have fun with us. Come hang with us. Um, come worship and just get in the word with us. Um, I promise it'll be um, no waste of your time. I know we got a lot going on, but I promise this won't waste your time in any way. Get your young adults here. You don't want to miss that. And then the next night right after that, we have G5 Women. Come on. So good. We have um, a physical gathering, and then we also have it available for online gathering. So if you guys um, don't live here, for our G5 family rooms, if you guys don't live here, and if you are visiting, you guys can still watch. Um, you can register at g5church.com for the G5 Women Zoom call. It'll be live streamed from here. So we won't be just physically gathering, but we will be gathering online as well. So you guys don't want to miss that out. Check it out, g5church.com. You won't be able to miss it. And then the Monday following that Saturday, we have G5 Men. Come on. So good. You can auto also register as well at g5church.com. For this, you do not want to miss out on joining this army. We are in a fight. We are in a march for one million men marching in this army. And you don't want to miss out. You want to be a part of this. One of you knows somebody. I know you guys know some people. You want to get this in their hands. Send it out. You can go to g5church.com as well or on the app. You can register and get ready for this incredible Zoom call with PT. Just pouring into you on what it means to be a man and what God calls you to be so you don't want to miss that and then last but not least we have our ultimate leadership conference coming up in may this is elevate i'm telling you we are so excited legacy we're going to be raising and building legends you don't want to miss this i promise it will impact you in such beautiful ways and incredible ways but 
come and focus. You know, there's a lot going on and a lot to do with, um, there's a lot of training and a lot of conferences that focus on what you do and if you have a job and you guys kind of get trained on what you do. And you know, at Elevate, we really just hone in on who God's called us to be, not just what He asked us to do. And so I would encourage you to check this out. Um, as a servant leader, they have the orange um, G5 tags on, but if you guys see one of them, um, just maybe ask them their experience of Elevate so you guys can kind of get a little idea more of um, just what it is for a personal experience. But you guys don't want to miss this. You can sign up at g5church.com as well and register for that. Tickets are selling quick, so don't miss out on that. Um, that's it for the G5 news. I got a question for G5, and I need to hear it loud and proud. But G5 likes to do what? We like to eat. That's right. So we are going to head out and grab some food. If you brought food, thank you. G5 doesn't provide the food, but G5ers provide the food. Um, we just ask you guys, again, please honor and respect the ladies out there that are serving you. If they're not ready, please don't try to um, get them to hurry up or um, just <laughs> even get mad at them that they're taking. Please give them time to get this ready. They don't have to do this. They get to do this for you. But, you know, we're not here just to get a... <laughs> our stomach's full. It's just really about fellowshipping together, okay? So just be patient with that. And just kids, I beg you, don't fill your plates. There's a lot of people here who wanna eat. Adults too, don't fill your plates. Um, but we do ask this, you guys, use one plate. If you go back through the line, after everyone has gone through the line, after everyone has gone through the line, you can go back through the line, but make sure you guys use the same plate you took before. One cup, write your name on it. We just want to be really good stewards of what God gives us, amen. And so as a family and as a congregation, we're going to do that together. But I'm going to bless the food and then we're going to be released. So Jesus, we just thank you. God, I thank you for the food that has been prepared. I thank you for the hands that prepared it. I just ask you to bless it and anoint it, God. God, I thank you for this opportunity that we get to do this afterwards, God. I know many places don't do this, and God, how cool that we get this opportunity. I pray that we would never take it for granted, that you've given us this place to do this, God, this privilege to have this fellowship after church, Jesus. God, I pray that we wouldn't waste this time, that we wouldn't just focus on getting fed by the food, God, but we would actually just focus on really building relationships healthy through you, God. Um, God, that we would just honor one another, and serve one another, God. We just love you so incredibly much. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, G5 said, I love you, church. We will see you Sunday at 10 a.m. Go get you some food.